World Heart Day is annually observed on September 29th around the globe in an effort to raise public awareness about cardiovascular diseases, their prevention and the global impact. Cardiovascular diseases claim the lives of around 17.9 million people each year as per data collected by the World Health Organization and it results in 31% of all global deaths. In studio with me is Dr. Everest Naganda, the Director of Cardiovascular Diseases from the Rwanda Biomedical Center. Good evening, doctor. Good evening to you. Well, doctor, these are such grim numbers globally and quite alarming. What do the statistics look like here in Rwanda? Thank you very much. Uh, really, the, the figures are alarming, but uh, it is talking global data. But coming back to Rwanda, even in the region first, where it is among the 17.9 million that are dying due to cardiovascular diseases, 40% are from low or developing countries, including Rwanda. So we can also, I can also remind that uh, the data from Health Information System, Rwanda Health Information System, uh, we got reports that 14% were due to cardiovascular diseases as past disease specific cause of death. Absolutely, and how do these diseases usually manifest? Thank you. That's why uh, they call these diseases the silent killers. Most of heart diseases, like uh, taking an example of hypertension, even rheumatic heart disease, even cardiomyopathy, these are the diseases that develop or affect somebody gradually. So it takes time for somebody to, uh, to know that he has or she has heart diseases, but with time, uh, you just see that somebody is uh, failing to breathe when he's like doing some activity or even when he's, as time goes on, he fails even to breathe when he's standing. As time goes on still, then when he's sitting and even when you are lying. So this is other uh, sign of heart diseases. But sometimes you just, just get to see that the body starts swearing because sometimes the blood can pump the, the blood, I mean the heart can pump the blood, and then due to the failure of the heart, the, the blood comes back and then starts st uh, stagging in, the, in most of the organs like limbs. So you see people swelling legs most of the time due to heart diseases. Mm. Absolutely, we'll speak a little bit about the social and economic determinants. What is being done or what should be done to actually reduce uh, major risks, major cardiovascular disease risks, as well as their social and economic determinants. Thank you very much. You know, when it comes to NCDs, non-communicable diseases, particularly heart diseases, uh, the only thing is people to be responsible for their health, like do away with the risk factors like uh, over drinking, uh, smoking, you know, most of the those things like they are like uh, cultural, like when people go to do some, uh, some functions, they give them alcohol or smoke, I mean tobacco, so these kinds. But besides that, also even the type of foods that we take, some have a lot of fats, others have a lot of salt, others have so much sugar, sugars, so all the three uh, also affect people and uh, they tend to develop into uh, overweight and obesity and then they, those are risk factors to cardiovascular diseases. Mm. But besides that, we have also other factors, you know, we call, there's what you call modifiable risk factors. These are the factors that we can, go away, can do away with them and then we prevent heart diseases. They are what we call metabolic diseases, like having so many fats in your, I mean, a lot of fats in your body. Like when you have diabetes, that's sugar imbalances in your body, and then hypertension. All those things, all those disease conditions can lead to cardio, cardiovascular disease. So those are ma, uh, what we call modifiable risk factors. Mm. And then there are others that are not modifiable, like maybe uh, when you are born with inherited diseases and others like family history of such kind of diseases. Yeah. And then I'll speak about policy. And oftentimes we've heard doctors say that lifestyle changes are essential to fight these uh, cardiovascular 
diseases. But it's not a call that everyone has heeded to. For example, I'll speak for young people in particular. Sometimes we tend to think that maybe we are not that vulnerable to these diseases. And even, I'm sure even other groups of people. So just beyond awareness and advocacy, uh, what more can be done to actually show the severity of these diseases? For instance, including um, food processing uh, companies, like you said, that people eating food with too much salt. Uh, are we going to see, is there a point we'll see maybe for these factories that manufacture the food, they will indicate for every one bottle of soda that you take, maybe you have to walk 100 meters or something like that. What, what more, like what's the plan to actually do away with these diseases? Thank you very much. Uh, it's like uh, uh, the first step that the government took was to to uh, establish the, uh, the I would say, non-communicable disease division in Rwanda Biomedical Center. And you had to lie strategic plan and policies. So one of the things you have to do is to include the, like public awareness about those kind of risk factors, including food, foods, and then others to establish, I mean, to put policies that address these kind of risk factors. I just give an example for people, for the public to understand. You will find that somebody is manufacturing, I mean, uh, some kinds of food. On the packaging, you will just say like, good for blessed feeding mothers. Mm. But when it comes to the content of the food, uh, of the, uh, the nutrients that are there, it can't be seen, it is put behind in small letters. So we are calling upon the factories also to label well the foods that we are taking such that somebody is aware of the risk factors and then also he or she has to take a decision on what foods he should be uh, deciding to take as pertains prevention of cardiovascular diseases. Mm. And then briefly, any other plan, systematic plan that the Rwanda Biomedical Center has probably in the future or uh, what, what is actually being done to deal with this? So basically, uh, when we started, we had three areas of intervention when the uh, NCD's vision was included in Rwanda Biomedical Center. We had three areas of intervention. One was to raise public awareness, to set policies like I said. Uh, that one is a, is a continuous process that we are uh, conducting. Number two was also, though we do kind of some kind of preventive measures, also unlucky people tend to fall sick. So we are trying to make uh, treatment centers, like uh, as pertain, I mean, when you go to the district hospital, uh, at first people used to come as far from Rusizi or from Kabarondo, Kajitumba, to come to seek the services at Sehashika, Kanombe, and Faisal. But this time we have tried to decentralize uh, treatment services at the level, uh, up to the level of health centers. Uh, taking an example, Hypertension, diabetes, and asthma are some of the services that can be uh, found at the health centers. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has proved uh, to, to help people not, I mean, to cut their journey short. And then this, uh, reminding that hypertension has been the first cause of heart failure and then the first cause of stroke in our country. Mm. So people are called upon to do prevention, to do early detection, and to seek treatment for early, I mean, recovery. Absolutely. Dr. Everest Nagana, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. for. Hopefully we can keep this discussion going.